Algebra 2, Lesson 1, A Course Introduction. This is a course in Algebra 2. I have taught several years of high school algebra and intend to make this course the best online or DVD course available covering Algebra 2. I have created over 200 math videos on YouTube, a two DVD set on using the graphing calculator, an Algebra Rap Music DVD, The Power of Algebra, and have made several presentations to assist other teachers with technology and other issues. This course is designed as a high school level Algebra 2 course but has other applications as well. You may also be interested in taking this course if you are an advanced high school Algebra 1 student ready for the increased rigor and scope of subject that Algebra 2 provides. Also, maybe you're an adult student starting back to school and your algebra skills are a little rusty. This course is for you. And finally, if you're taking an algebra course in college, this course could be a welcome supplement to reinforce most of the basic concepts taught in college algebra. Algebra 2 is a very important course, even for those not planning careers in math, science, or engineering. The goal, my goal for this course, is to create the best Algebra 2 course available on video by first giving clear conceptual explanations. I will try on my explanations to tie to prior experience of students as well as to look ahead to prepare us for where we'll eventually be going. Secondly, by giving a step-by-step -step breakdown on how to approach and solve problems, again tying in prior experience but done in such a way to better prepare us to understand what we'll be learning in the future. And finally, by providing strong multi-sensory reinforcement using technology, including music, use of graphics, and use of graphing calculators. Why Algebra 2? Algebra 1 is really only an introduction to algebra. Algebra 2 is an anchor for what you'll need to learn in high school and in college math. Algebra 2 is very practical and has a great number of real-world uses. You'll learn to use algebra to create models to explain and predict how things work in the real world. Specifically, colleges and universities use SAT and ACT scores, amongst other variables, to predict or model how well students will do in college. Also, the change in the world rainforest. We can chart worldwide carbon dioxide emissions to keep track of global warming, ice cap melting, sea level rising, and other effects on our environment. And in the world of sports, we can use algebra to predict which team will likely win, which players will have the most success, and many other things. During the course, we will examine functions. The concept of function is that for any input value, there will be only one possible output value. An example of a very simple function is E equals 12H, and the 12H means 12 times whatever number H is. This simple function represents a person who works for pay at a rate of $12 per hour. So if Sue works for three hours, according to this function, the function becomes the equation E equals 12 times 3. And so E equals 36, which represents $36. This is a very simple linear function, and while we will examine functions of greater complexity during the course, the concept of using functions to find outputs for input values is exactly the same. We will apply this concept in many different situations. We will learn to use functions to model situations that have mathematical relationships. And when we speak of model here, we're not talking about a fashion model who makes money wearing clothes. And we're not talking about a model like a model of an airplane or a car either. We are talking of an algebraic model or an equation that can calculate things like the flight of a rocket, the economy, unemployment, housing, and social studies issues. We will study how to model using equations. We will learn to create and solve equations, many different kinds of equations. We will learn about systems of equations, which are at least two equations with the same variables. We will use these equations to find an answer, to make decisions. We will learn to sketch graphs, Drawing graphs gives us a picture of functions and equations that can help us understand relationships between variables. What I show here with the graph parabola in red is a little bit of a clumsy drawing, but sketching graphs is just that. It's a quick way of evaluating a function or model by seeing a picture of what's going on. And finally, we'll employ a very important part of algebra that's perhaps the most neglected area of algebra, and that's learning or getting the habit of checking work. In my experience as a teacher, the one thing most students can do immediately 
to improve as a student is to develop the habit and discipline of checking work. You'll see me check most of the work I do and learn. I hope that checking is just a part of critical thinking. It starts when you first look at a problem. We'll get into that. And we will solve equations. Let's look at some of the types of equations we will be solving. We will solve linear equations. We will solve quadratic equations, equations with a variable squared term. We will solve other polynomial equations like this cubic equation. We will solve absolute value equations. We will solve uh, root equations like square root equations or cube root equations. We will solve logarithmic equations like this one. We will solve exponential equations and we will solve rational equations where the unknown is in the denominator. Whenever we have data or numbers that relate two variables, we can create what we call a scatter plot to analyze the nature of the relationship. We can draw a line to fit the points as well as we can so we can use it to predict what an output value would most likely be for a given input value. We will examine by graphing real-world scenarios by the use of systems of equations. And we will examine the significance of the point where these two functions cross, the break-even point, a very important real-world concept. At a certain level of sales, the company's revenues will start to exceed its costs and become profitable. Now we'll discuss how to use the lessons in this course. First, watch the video. Secondly, stop, rewind, and review. This is not a normal course, and the downside of that is that I, in this media, am not a live teacher that you can interact with for more complete explanations. However, by rewinding and watching what you don't understand, you don't have to wait for me or anyone else. This is done at your convenience. Third, work the problems. Algebra is not a subject where you can sit back, listen, and memorize to be successful. We build our skill level as we go and we learn by doing. As a problem comes up, stop the video and try to work it out. You will get more out of it that way. And finally, if you are taking a course, look for problems in your textbook similar to the ones we're working in the course so you can actively apply what we're doing on video to your real life as a student. Let's finish by taking a look at where we're going. Starting from Algebra 2, in high school we go to pre-calculus or sometimes the course is labeled trigonometry. And after that, if you have the time and inclination, even in high school, you may be able to go into calculus. And if this is your last math course in the high school level, you may go into college starting with either college algebra or pre-calculus. And from college algebra, there are a couple different ways to go. From here, you could go to the business or social sciences math track of statistics, quantitative methods, and possibly on to experimental psychology. Or you could go on to the technical sciences or engineering track by going to calculus, then differential equations, and on to yet higher math applications. Some of the most advanced academic programs have programs that go both ways. The crucial point here is to notice that Algebra 2 is a crucial building block no matter which way you go in your future education. In order to produce this course that will be several hours in length, it will take me hundreds of hours and maybe as long as a year to do so. So at first the playlist of lessons will be incomplete. This has been Algebra 2 Lesson 1, A Course Introduction. Thanks for viewing.